Hello everyone, my name is Lorthorn, and welcome to How to Blood Magic. Alright, let's get into it. How do you start Blood Magic? Well, it's actually a pretty simple mod to get started with. The most basic thing in this mod that you want to start with is your own copy of Sagnine Sentiente, or whatever it's called. Very simple make, just need glass, a feather, and a book. So, simple. This book contains all the stuff within Blood Magic tells you how to do them, mostly. But this is a comprehensive guide and not a just directing you to the book. So where do you actually start with this mod after you have this book? Well, the best place to go is to get yourself some iron, redstone string, so you can make yourself one of these rudimentary snares. Now the snare is what you use to get demon souls. And to do that simply, you um, get yourself some monsters and then you throw it at them and eventually if it actually hits them it'll create those little white particle effects it actually deals no damage but creates particle effects and if you kill a monster with those particle effects it drops some demonic will again if we can hit this one here he starts sparkling we strike him we get another piece of demonic will now demonic will is used for all sorts of things in this mod one of the most important things this is used for, which we can come over to right away here, is this lovely little thing here called the Blood Altar. Blood Altar is basically the center of all your power in Blood Magic. It is how you do rituals, how you make stronger items for rituals, all that sort of stuff. However, to use the Blood Altar, you need the course to feed it your blood. To do that, you get yourself one of these nifty little items over here, which is the Sacrificial Dagger. Pretty easy to make, just requires some gold and iron, and then boom, you have it. Now, how does this thing work? When you walk up this thing, you simply right-click, but not right-click on it, and it'll deal a heart of damage to you and fill up the altar with some of your blood. And you can keep doing this all the way until death, and it will kill you. There's no prevention on it, so you do have to be a little bit careful. Now at this point, you're probably wondering, okay, what, what do I do with this blood though? Because, well, I have the altar with the blood. Well, what you do, one of the main things you do, anyways, is you use the blood or life points to fuel spells and rituals. But you also use it to infuse a diamond to get yourself a blood orb, so you're not stuck to doing all your rituals and shenanigans near the blood altar. Now to do that, you simply take yourself this happy little diamond here, you plonk it into a nice filled pool of blood, and so it'll start to sparkle and jangle and all the right stuff. And eventually, it'll turn into a blood orb. It does take a pretty decent amount of time to get a blood orb from the most basic of altars, and it's still a very useful item. However, that's not the only important thing you'll want to be getting yourself. For next on the to-do list to grab yourself is is the Hellfire Furnace. Now this thing here is basically what makes everything else in this mod. You charge it by placing Demonic Will here, and then you put the required crafting recipes in all the sides, and what you want should appear in the center. One of the most useful things the furnace makes is Arcane Ashes. Arcane Ashes are the most rudimentary, basic beginner stuff for blood magic. It, it, helps you make systems and slowly build up to everything else you'll want within this mod. Your whole section on arcane ashes in the alchemist part of the blood magic book. For a brief example of the various capabilities of these ashes, you can create a slime pad by simply putting down the right resources. I'll show you, give me a moment. So it bounces you. Now, what does it actually look like, though, in action when making these things? Because the instructions are a bit vague. So you have to do it in the right order or it won't work. When you put down ashes, it will use up a slight amount of charge. And then you put the ingredients in. As you can see, that was the wrong order. So you can break the ashes and try again. So we want to start with slime ball. And then we activate it with the redstone. So you have to follow the, the correct order and then it'll make the spell. A few other examples I've made are over here. You can make teleporters with it. The teleporters will just keep moving you along. Um, so they root in the arrow direction. Now, 
to get the direction it's not where you um, place the ingredients looking the direction is actually set by this arrow here so when you put down the ash the direction is set by the arrow that points the only arrow that's pointing straight on a uh, x-axis or y but whatever this sort of axis thing here compass axis and not other compass axis so they can do a lot of stuff though these things like you can make them um basically stop fall damage so they can redirect you there's these whole flingy movie ones here which are made i believe by feathers and redstone they're quite useful you can give yourself basically a boost to your speed and they can direct your directions uh, you can have these ones here face upwards and they can direct you where you want to go if they're hitting a wall it will propel you upwards so there's a whole bunch of things you can do with that there you can use them in this case here uh, i believe the recipe is bow arrow and the like you put into this thing here and it creates you a nice little security system there we go so as long as it has arrows in it, it will shoot hostile mods and do these little animations of drawing back but it does require to have ammo so you can set up yourself a little turret system and a big one which requires the block of lazuli and some redstone can make this hovering island appear there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with it uh oh yes also you can have it charge a furnace for you so it'll cook food as you can see here this is the first one and there's another one i believe over here and there's another one that makes you mine faster However, be aware of the furnace and mining one because they draw on your life force. So these are just basic room entry things that will help you throughout the rest of the mod. This little ashes, although the ash is important for far more things. But after you've played around with the ashes and figure out what you want with that, the next step, which is quite important, is to get yourself one of these things, a uh, Petty Tatark Gem. Now the Petty Tatark Gem is incredibly useful because it stores the mock will. So as long as you're holding it, instead of you getting gems from these suckers here, so we'll drop one in. So instead of you getting their um, whatever, Demok will, it will look at the gem here. So 4.55, we kill this sucker, we pick it up, and it gets sucked into the gem so your inventory is not cl cluttered. So your inventory is not cluttered up, and we have a storage thing for bigger and better rituals because sometimes you need to have like 20 demog will and you can't get that in a basic little soul shard but the petty tatark gem is quite limited in what it can do for you it can store basic will so you can charge stuff like arcane ash and a few other things you want to upgrade it as fast as you can and to upgrade it you will need actually a considerable amount of demog will but then you can take all these resources here and give it some fuel. It will tell you instructions and bam, there you go. Lesser Tatark gem. I believe actually this setup here should be good enough for us to acquire one. So if we grab some redstone, a little bit of that, a little bit of that, we throw, give it 64 and that will consume a great deal of its power and for some reason, even though they need to be maxed out, it doesn't draw the will. It's a little bit confusing, but you get the lesser target gem and then you can start charging that up. However, instead of trying to charge that up the normal way of throwing these rudimentary snares, because it's really inefficient, they're quite expensive, and it's not always guaranteed, you want to get yourself a sentient sword. Now, a sentient sword requires you to have yourself a basic iron sword to make and a Tatark gem with at least a modicum of charge to it. Any sort of Tatark gem will do. It can be lesser, it can be petty, anything you like. And it'll forge it into a sentient sword. Now, the sentient sword is. Its power is based on how much Dimok will you have, how much will you have contained. But also, instead of requiring the snares, we can get rid of all of these here. Instead of requiring the snares, you can simply. Drop yourself in some monster buddies, or go hunting them, and you slap them with the sword, and it will just start charging the gem. Now, it's not quite the same as, um, that was weird. 
It is not quite the same efficiency as a rudimentary snare because that can pull bigger souls in, but is definitely going to be better than throwing snares constantly and hoping to snare a soul. And you can get pretty fast if you find a dungeon with a spawner. From the Zitaric Sword and Lesser Gem, we will move on now to one of the other required basics of this mod pack, which is these lovely things here is called slates. Now, slates are used in all sorts of fun and wonderful recipes. They produce a lot of the other stuff contained with blood magic. Now, to get them, all you have to do is you have to take normal stone, get a good amount of blood, and it will create a slate. So slates, though, make a lot of the fundamentals. Now, what are some of the fundamental things they make? Well, one of the more important things they can make for you is this. Simply let it spin up. It will go through the process. It's kind of cool. You get a nice little animation. And then it should drop for you the div divination sigil. Now, the divination symbol is your bread and butter. It's basically your manual to how everything in your world's working. It says, oh, this here has 8,000 blood in it, and this one here has a good amount. So it basically lets you know how much blood in there, what level they are. It can look at multiple different things, but this tells you everything you need to know about the blood in the world. Next, to ensure you do not die constantly, so you can survive to get the stronger gems, we're going to move on to an item of great value, I think, which is the Sentient Armor Gem. The Sentient Armor Gem is what protects you from everything. So it gives you a suit of armor. You equip it and it will run off the amount of demonic will you have. Every time you get hit, it will protect you. Its power is based on how much demonic will you have. You can wear it over either armor. You basically activate it and bam, you got some Sentient Armor on. Be careful in taking off though. Who knows what things might happen. But it does require quite a bit of will to make, so you will have to fiddle about with it. But the basic recipe is, of course, obsidian, diamonds, chest piece, iron, and the dark gems, which will require some charge. This mod really likes actually um, giving flavor in all the things. It talks about this in Demonkin, and there's a whole bunch of stuff in there you can look at, but. I'd recommend getting this about as fast as you can after the Demonic Sword and upgrading your gems a little bit. There is even greater levels of gems as well that you can achieve, and it's just a keep on getting stronger and stronger will so you can make them, I believe, sort of game, as we can see here. So now we've come to a bit of a bottleneck, because we figured almost everything out that we can to this point without having a stronger altar. So once you've gotten your paid dark gems and your slates made, a few other things about your sword collecting the element will, you're like, oh, I can't progress any further. And that's because you need higher level blood altars. Now to figure out how to make higher level blood altars, it does tell you in the book, but also tells you to make yourself this thing, which is basically you put a book in a blood altar and then it makes you this lovely little book here, which you can set which tier you want. And then you click on a blood altar and it will show you what you need to do next, what blocks need to go under, because they're multi-structures. Now the block that you will need though to do this upgrading can be found over here, which is the blank rune. Now the blank rune requires the blood orb, which will use up some blood points in it, so you'll need to actually charge it in your blood network, which can be done by right clicking while holding it. Forgot to mention that. But yes, so you put it in there and it'll craft you these rooms. And then the first one's quite simple, uh, the tier two here. We can even see it's tier two with this thing. It just requires these runes underneath it and then bam, you got a tier two. The next tier is pretty straightforward, although it does look a little bit funky here, which is a extra ring underneath here. There is no spaces left here, goes up onto cobblestone bricks and glowstone. And that is pretty straightforward. But after that, it gets a little bit stranger. So again, you keep working up. So make sure you start with a lost space and maybe even raise a little bit of air or dig things out so you can have yourself a lovely little pyramid going on. 
and we require these bloodstone bricks. Now, how do you get a bloodstone brick? Well, there is another kind of item in this game besides the mock will, which is these weakened blood shards. And you just combine it with normal stone, and it'll make you what you need, and then you get that bricks, boom, Bob's your uncle. But to get this blood thingy bopper going, you will need to get yourself some binding regiment. Binding regiment is made in the Hellfire Forge with sit ingredients here, any sort of charge will do, and it will make you some binding regiment. Now, binding regiment is how you get yourself the bound items. Now, bound items require, oh look, our friend Arcane Ash again to make. So, what else does it require? Well, it needs to buy a regiment, as said, and it requires a diamond sword. You can also make other bound tools, but we'll start with the basics here. Now, these bound tools, put down the ash again, and then you put in the binding regiment, and it makes this ridiculously huge, really cool looking thing here. And you're like, okay, what's now, boss? Well, you put the sword in. And then this whole thing starts spinning, floats through the air. Strikes by lightning. Don't be standing it, you will die. Three lightning strikes, one's enough to kill. Oh, four. Starts spinning around, goes all fancy dancy. And bam, you got yourself this weird thing here. Now this is a bound blade. You pop it on and it turns on. You don't want to always be activated though, because it draws on your life points. Now your life points are stored in your blood orb, which you're carrying around for you, and you can charge up. If you don't have any charge in your blood orb, it will start feeding off of you, and it will eat you alive. It's quite a nasty thing. But then to get the blood shard, all you have to do is go and kill yourself some zombies, or any other hostile mob, with the bound blade. And eventually in the mess of those that you kill, you will get yourself some weak blood shards. And then you can proceed to make yourself that tier 3 altar. Now the final tier of the altar is a little bit absurd. So it requires, same thing as everything else before, I'll explain that later. But it requires you to make yourself a beacon on every corner. And it has to be activated beacon, and you can activate it more. But yes, tier 4 is not achievable until you've done quite a bit. But it's actually quite achievable with this mod if you do the right things. Now that we've beaten the bottleneck of nearing a higher tier of altar, we got those tier 2s over there, you can start making yourself the more powerful slates. So we can take this blank slate here, we can come over to this thing, and it will actually make us the next tier slate, and so on and so forth. Now with these slates, you can get yourself some new magic to play around with once you start with the upgrades, which can help you basically keep on furthering your aims. So, if you get yourself some air regiment, which is quite easy to make with this whole mess here, this little garbin, then you can slap down up there, makes sense, reinforce slate, there we go, right order now, it'll start spinning around, and it will make for you a lovely new item, which is the air sigil. Now, the air sigil does magic. Some magic requires LP, some doesn't. This thing lets you fly whenever you right-click. There's a whole lot of them. There's a whole big list of slates, which are fun to learn and play around with. Each one requires a different regiment to make. So you basically get the root hard tools, you put them into the Hellfire Forge, and then you can make them. Of course, you will be needing more and more power to do so. So, of course, remember to have your sentient sword with you, but then you need to get the even stronger Tatark gems. To get the higher tiers of Tatark Gems, you're going to start needing the stronger slates and more things required. But you can get yourself a common Tatark Gem with the imbued slate, which you can now get. Now you might have noticed here, you require this crystallized demonic will. And that is actually the next part of what we're going to do. So to get yourself some crystallized demonic will... Now to get yourself some crystallized demonic will, you will need two... Uh, creations. One being a demonic crucible. It's not exactly necessary, but I would recommend it. And you can make that with Hellfire Forge like everything else, so you'll just need to keep farming them souls. And then, once you have that set up, like so, you put it down, then you put one of your Tatark gems that are charged in it. You want to make yourself, with the Hellfire Forge, a demonic crystallizer. And you put that thing down, and it will create this for you. Now these crystals here, 
you simply harvest by breaking them off. And of course in creative mode, but they will give you these things when you break them properly. Um, so it's a little bit messy right now. They will give you these things and it will slowly gather it from the area. And these are used for all sorts of things like, well, the earlier, even stronger slate and upgraded to Targ gem requires this, woohoo. But also it can make you the Democ will gauge, which tells you how much Democ will is in an area, which is a handy dandy tool in itself. So yes, you basically want to go here next. If you're wondering where to go next, this is where next. The book sort of gives you an order instruction, but this is where you keep going. The gauge isn't necessary, but still it's another nice little tool. And then you can keep making the stronger Tatar gems until you want to make a greater Tatar gem into a grand Tatar gem, which requires another star, of course. So you will need to be getting yourself quite a few nether stars actually for this mod. But with the sentient armor and a lot of will, you should be able to do that. Or you can get yourself the living armor. Living armor is pretty cool stuff. So it is made simply with an alchemy array, as we did with swords. Sorry, as we do this, and iron armor, and it also uses your life points. However, this stuff here can actually learn. So the more you do with it, more upgrades, but you have to have a full set. But it's another really strong item to get yourself, and you can basically slowly upgrade it so you can make yourself a wither farming set of armor, or do a few other sneaky things. Now, speaking of useful sneaky stuff, I'm going to cover it because damn it, I figured it out and I'm proud of myself, sort of. So there is this thing in this mod, which are these master routing nodes, these nodes of routing. So first you have to make yourself this little sticky boo here. Then you can figure out how to make all the different routing nodes on your own time. They're pretty straightforward to make. But then when you have this thing, First, you go to your master eye node, you need one of these, and then you get yourself a outputting node and a output node and input node. And you give them some instructions. These ones actually have no filters on, but so you put them down and you root them all by clicking these things together and boom, they get rooted. And then you can put whatever you like into this chest and I'll root through the system and I'll put it into the next nearest container. And so you can have transportation that's really good with simple magic, which will drive you insane to figure out. But I think it's a fun part of the experience of the mod. So, so this mod takes slow progression upgrading. There's tons of different spells, but there is s several odd ends we need to clear up before we give you the true instructions of how to finish it off. So uh, another thing which isn't covered in the books, unfortunately, is this alchemy table. It's pretty straightforward to make and uh, pretty straightforward to make. And once you have it made, it can do all sorts of things for you. If we go here uh, and go to uses, and it can make you clay out of sand and water, gunpowder, and then it has a whole bunch of other things that you'll require for various different stuff. But it's it's a pretty cool item. That's kind of useful. It can make leather, all sorts of stuff. And it requires blood, of course. It doesn't talk about it in the book, which is a little unfortunate, but yeah, this is something you will need to make for certain things in the future. I required. So what on earth are these? Well, these here are runes. Now runes are a thing you can craft onto blank rune stones, and there's a whole bunch of different recipes, normal crafting table, and they have all sorts of different effects. If we go over here, look at them all. There's a displacement rune, there's a efficiency rune, rune of sacrifice, all sorts of things. It'll tell you about them in the book here, under the Arcanist, I believe? Yeah, speed rune. And it tells you all the things they do. And basically they make it so, oh, rituals here will complete faster. So if you, so if you remember when we put the diamond in that one, it took a really long time to actually complete the ritual. This one will make the ritual go faster. It's still, there's a limited amount of runes you can put down. They can only be in the rune slots as given, but this is actually supposed to be about 100% faster. So it's a damn long ritual to make these bloodstones. But it was faster, definitely faster than before. So there's tons of different runes and you read about their effects and you can learn about themselves because it's not really required to get you started up. However, one thing which really confused me and took a while to figure out 
is how can I make the sacrifice with our little sacrificial dagger friend more efficient? And for that, you are going to need yourself the incense altar. Its recipe is pretty straightforward as well. You can find that out. But there is something else required for the incense altar. So what exactly does it do though in the first place? Well, it makes your rituals far more efficient. You can see this here as 1316, not exactly sure what it means, but that is 41% more efficiency with sacrifices. And it does this with tranquility. Now tranquility can be increased and decreased with a whole bunch of bullshittery that doesn't entirely make sense to me. But the most basic thing is building these wooden paths or stone paths, basically any sort of path, it's just normal things with a blood orb. Um, stone paths are better than wooden paths. But then you set them up in a sort of stair-like fashion. Now, I'm not exactly sure on the map, and you can like figure out some crazy math stuff with it because it's all based around math, but the one that I found out which works pretty well is this sort of staircase pattern here, which is a platform nine, a platform nine, and then two and two, and it goes out like this, and it surrounds the thing like this. It has to be in every, has to be in every cardinal direction. And then you can come over to your little altar here, and it will, um, I mean, we are in creative mode, but bam, it fills up really fast. Now, the, the more efficient ones you can do is there's a whole list of things on tranquility and using obsidian here makes it far more efficient. And my setup here got up to 119 tranquility, which makes blood fill way faster. And it requires you to get like all sorts of nonsense trees, though, having trees and plants planted around a bit of lava. Um, you want to have netherrack and crops planted, actually. So there's a whole bunch of things with tranquility. I don't really understand it, but this is a sort of setup you can attempt to do to make your thing more efficient for your rituals. I mean, altar, which is where rituals are next. And basically, finally, rituals require your blood network. They can be done near altars, but it's um, better recommended to uh, have the stronger... Uh, orbs and then to fill them with life essence for your thing and then a ritual is actually really really easy to do after all said and done so all you need for rituals is a master ritual stone which we can see here is crafted with obsidian so it's a little bit expensive but once you have one you have one and you slap that sucker down wherever you like and then once you have the natural stone, you will need some troll stones, which are crafted again with obsidian and reinforced slates. And you just keep on holding on to these ritual stones in your inventory. Then, to for more complex rituals and various things in the future, you'll need to get yourself every single one of these elemental descriptors, the most basic ones first, of course. So lapis in a tier three, fire in a tier three, earth, this, and then finally in a tier four is obsidian, a block of coal. But you get yourself these things, and you want to place them in your inventory as well. And then the final thing, which actually makes it incredibly easy, is you get a ritual diviner. And the ritual diviner basically is how you do things. But first, you go into this book here, click on the ritual master, and it will tell you all the various different rituals you can get and do. And you open up the thing, and it says, okay, so... I want the cry of the terminal, which um, feeds life points from the soul network back into an altar. This falls under the usage of life essence at altar. Every point of life transform to your altar costs two life points from the network, costing a ridiculous amount. So you're like, okay, maybe not that ritual, but you want to do some ritual and you can look it up in this book here. And then they have requirements for you to place around the thing, but you're not exactly sure how to place the things right. Well, that's what the ritual diviner's for. So you shift click, and then you right click, and let's have it against a brown background. It will go through the list of all the different rituals, and you can see them. So ritual of high jump. Oh yeah, so you have to right click every time. Okay. And then I'll create the right proper ritual for you. It does have to have the space available, but then you can simply right click in it and it will fill in them for you. I was having problems earlier because you need to have empty space underneath this ritual, but then you have the ritual of high jump. Then to cast the ritual, you need yourself a activation stone, which can be gotten by a lava crystal, which can be gotten by a whole other load of stuff. But anyways, once you have the weekend activation crystal, you click on the thing 
and it should activate the ritual. Um, however, if you don't have enough life network, it will instead just make you nauseous. So we are going to get ourselves this thing fully charged. And each time you go on, then it will use your life essence. But from the center of the ritual, it will launch you high up in the air, which I think is pretty cool. And there's a whole bunch of different rituals you can do, like this one right here. If we activate it, energy flows through the ritual. Not exactly sure what it does, but we've got the ritual going. So there's all sorts of random and fun things you can do with these rituals, which will help you even further yourself in mods, all of them with um, collecting essence points. But anyways, I believe that's the basics, and that's how to blood magic, actually. Just go through this uh, list, order earlier, kind of dissolve later, but that's the way things go. And yeah, you will need to get yourself some sort of monster farm, either find a dungeon to farm and build a blockade so you can just keep whacking them with your sentient sword, but you can do a whole bunch of things. Train your armor, explore for yourself, but this is the basic how-to blood magic. All things figured out and explained. By the by, there is one thing that I myself could not figure out, uh, and it is these damned little teleposers. I don't get them. I'm not sure how they're useful, maybe for transferring rituals and altars and stuff. I seriously can't figure them out. They don't seem to work for me. So if you can figure out teleposers, good for you. But I have no clue how they work. Well, anyways, that's that. Those are the basics. Um, I didn't cover all the things in depth and all the individual rituals, because God, that would take forever. And that's kind of once you have the first ritual figured out and the first thing done, you can do the rest of it. So you don't really need me anymore. So that's the basics. That's how to. Thank you all for watching. Um, and I will catch you next time. So goodbye.